Lucas. Postwell. Tornheim. Einmeier. Gianni. Collins. Tony. Willard. Ripley. What is he doing? Reptiled. Mayo. Forgive me. But I have to use you. What? <laughs> Episode 36, Family Portrait. What the hell is that? So he's got the souls of other people inside of him. That's cool. So I've been thinking about Hohenheim, and I have a theory to float out there, even though I have no idea if there's any truth to it at all. I started thinking about this after I saw Father for the first time, and about how they clearly have a resemblance, right? They're, they're almost identical. Hohenheim seems to know about human transmutation because he gave Ed some insight on it, right? And Father, in a way, seems like kind of a shell of a, of a human being. So I'm wondering if something similar didn't happen to Hohenheim that happened to Al, where certain aspects of him were split. And now we see that Father has souls, I'm guessing, inside of him. Similar to the way Father uses Philosopher's Stones to fuel the homunculi. It's all very strange. Thirteen years ago. Oh, look at them. Nice, is this gonna be a you Hohenheim flashback? Them, you know. That's awesome. They are your sons. I don't want the monster to spread. Please. If it could spread that way, don't you think I would have caught it a long time ago? <clears throat> Since I got this body, I've seen a lot of death. Since I got this body, huh? Each time I encountered something new and wondrous, it seemed right that I'd accepted this body and kept on living. For a long time, that was enough. But then, I met you, and together we created two sons. Now it's different. I don't get any older. But my sons age and grow before my eyes. And suddenly, I'm terrified. I'm realizing that I really am a monster so that's a huge reveal about hohenheim he seems like he's immortal or something like that or maybe it's immortality in the way that al is mortal because he talked about since i accepted this body right so it's not his original body or maybe he never even had a body and so he can't die i'm starting to think there's a deeper connection between hohenheim and al besides just al being his son because he has a body that doesn't age and also this is one of al's big dilemmas right being a monster al's not his own father is he <laughs> But more important than my wild speculating is Hohenheim's character. This clears a lot up. One of the bigger questions for me this whole time has been what was Hohenheim's involvement with the homunculi and father? And one of the limiting factors for the idea that he's connected was that he seems like a normal human, but now we know he can't age. And we also know from the recap episode that he has some major conflict about what he's done and also what he will continue to do. So something happened to him that made him this way, that led him on this path to amass power through the Philosopher's Stone, I'm guessing, in order to do something. <laughs> But interestingly, what I think that episode and this little monologue did is it humanized him in a big way. He seems more and more to me like a very conscientious person. And maybe the first evidence of that was him letting Ed off the hook, letting him know that he didn't actually bring his mother back from the dead. And you can really feel his love for Trisha, and you can also feel Trisha's love for him. And I always got the sense that she understood why he left and supported it, even if it made her really unhappy. Dear, dear, come here a minute. <sighs> What is it? It's weird seeing him living a domestic life. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Well, this is the portrait, the famous picture, yeah. That's pretty short notice. You look great. You hold Ed, all right? Uh, uh, sure. Ed looks so in awe of him. <sighs> okay, we're ready. You can go ahead. Look at that stare. This isn't good. Why not? What you don't see, dear, is that someday I'm going to be a wrinkled old monster myself. So today, we are going to take this picture. And I'll be able to remember us all together, smiling. No matter what, we're always a family. So even if you're scared, don't try distancing yourself from us. And one other thing, too. Stop calling yourself a monster. It's not true. <sighs> Say cheese, everyone. He's taking it. Smile, dear. <laughs> Is he crying? Aw. Damn, that's heartbreaking. My plan was to take this body, and in doing so, to extend my life. But things are different now. I want to be with Trisha and the boys. To grow old and die with them. That bastard. Who? Which bastard? <laughs> There's a lot of them in the show. Trisha, I'm going away. Wait here for me. Okay. Wow, she's very understanding. I don't want them to know about my body. Right. 
sure you don't want me to wake them? They're about to wake I up. Can't bear to look at their faces. Silly man, it's okay for you to cry. He's so sensitive. I had totally the wrong impression of him. And so does Ed, I guess. Oh, there they are. you two boys are up early. What are you doing out of bed? It's funny because we've seen this before, but this is such a 180 in perspective. Because the first time we saw it from Ed's perspective, which is this dark, neglectful, stern person leaving. And now we see it from Hohenheim's perspective where he's heartbroken and he just wants to love his family. <laughs> Weird. I love it though. I'm actually starting to love Hohenheim. He's a sweet, sweet man. Just like Al. I feel like Ed is intuiting something. Something's not right. <laughs> what an opening. That was just the opening of the episode? <laughs> Damn. That's insane. That was so rich. That whole thing. Man, totally different perspective on Hohenheim. This is riveting. I'm, like, hooked. Meanwhile, back at Briggs. I kind of wanted more Hohenheim. Smith, go back and report. Sir! <laughs> what is it? Something's coming. What the hell is that? What is this thing? Would you be interested in a legion of immortal soldiers? He took the bait. Never dying. Still way too close. Old. You want it too, don't you? Well, are you interested or not? Are we still talking about the legion of immortal soldiers or something else? If I buy into this, I'll be forced to facilitate whatever dirty plans he has for Briggs. And if I refuse... I'll just be swapped out for some other pawn. Probably demoted. You'll have to clean icicles. What's this about an underground tunnel? Speak, soldier. I wonder how much he knows. I'm moving the Elric brothers from the east cells to the west. May I ask who this is? This is Mr. Zolf J. Kimbley. He's General Raven's honored guest. Kimbley? The Crimson Alchemist. Right, this is their first meeting, right? Now I understand your nickname. <laughs> oh. It's this one. If one more person makes <laughs> that mistake! Nice to meet you. I've heard much about the Full Metal Alchemist. We lost all contact with the advanced team that was sent down to search the tunnel. There's something way worse than Sloth down there. It came back with what we assume was his arm. Just his arm? Where's the rest? It's still missing, sir. And his horse can't lead us back. It's too terrified to be of any use. At least it spared the horse. What have you done with the immortal monster you were telling me about earlier? Put him back and seal the tunnel's entrance, General. But there are still men- I am speaking to the General. See, I know Northern law. Obey strength and obey the power. Isn't that the way it works? Yeah, but I think he's underestimating her strength and power. But I understand her problem. Like, if this guy had shown up a little bit later, they might have been more organized, but their timing was terrible. It all happened at the same time. It appears you've been good boys and kept your mouths shut. That was the agreement. I've already spoken with the General. She's going to put the homunculus back underground and seal up the tunnel's opening. <laughs> General Armstrong's on our side now, Full Metal. Nah. They got him fooled pretty good. We can't just abandon them down there. They still may need our help. I said be quiet. Be quiet and obey. What a pain. Oh well. I have no choice. Such a pain. But I forget. Why is it a pain again? Too much of a pain to remember. It's crazy how brazen the top brass are. Like, what are these soldiers thinking right now? Close this hole and guard our secret. I'm counting on you soldiers. It's people like you who make this country what it is. This guy doesn't realize how much danger he's in right now. If Scar were here, he might be able to read it. The girl with the black and white gag. Right, let's go. Nice. There he is. Speak of the devil. We need to relocate. The Briggs soldiers know where we are. Move. We are the chosen ones and we will receive immortal near godly bodies. We'll rule the entire world. The name was Smith, wasn't it? There was nothing we could have done to save them. Those who aren't chosen, will they be sacrificed for those who are? Yes. The survival of the fittest. The weak will become the foundation of the country and the strong will take their rightful place on top. My guess, though, is that this guy is also expendable for the greater plan. He's been convinced into thinking he's important, but the scale of their operation is just too big for him to matter, it seems. 
You were seriously injured and near death, and then the same day you show up here totally recovered. What sort of magic can do that? That information is none of your business. Another thing, you were imprisoned for killing officers. Why would they release you? Do I have to say it again? It's none of your business. They're getting along well. I'm grateful for your assistance. You're a true servant to your country. I'll speak with my Oh god, superiors. he's so creepy. Preparing a seat for Stop. You. The rubbing. There's no need. What's that? <laughs> Which arm did Smith lose in the tunnel? The left or right? Wait, what are you... Growing old is truly terrifying, isn't it? You would know, General. Before you became so afraid of your the own soldiers mortality, faces I'm sure long ago you had an earnest love for your country you you can't you were going to be one of the chosen ones now nah, she played you I don't need a new seat from you you're going to lose the one your moldy ass has clung to for too long right about now Raven you old traitor! Wow whoa yeah she's not messing around. But immortality! <laughs> but my immortality. You are among the weak who will become the foundation for this country, literally. Nice. Going to, to be a moon. Nah, you probably weren't anyway. Now that that's done, get in touch <laughs> with Major Miles. <laughs> Sir. What the, the hell? Rest of you, we have work to do. Yeah, I mean, she's drawn her line in the sand. I want that concrete, in the concrete. nice and level. Right! right. Do you want to know about the war, about how your countrymen died in it? Shut your mouth, Kimberly. What, you don't want me to tell you? I said to shut up! Major, may I have a moment with you? Big things are happening in Fort Briggs. I have a for you from the General. She says operation complete. No need to buy more time. Got Roger it. That. I'm just glad I'm not stuck talking to that guy anymore. <laughs> Very professional. Apparently nobody can find General Raven. Do you have any idea where he might have gone off to? The General's missing? This is a case for Detective Kimberly. <laughs> if anything bad should happen to General Raven, then I have permission to act in whatever way that I see fit. That decision came down from the Fuhrer himself. <sighs> now, perhaps you could provide me with a car to drive me down the mountain. You should act quickly. It's in your best interest, I promise. Right now, orders from me are tantamount to orders from the Fuhrer. <laughs> yeah, Kimberly is a huge loose end here. Full Metal saw this coming. So he made us this secret passage into the tunnel. <sighs> That's why you gotta trust your leader. General Raven? I know, right? It's crazy. I can't just sit around while all this is going on. I need to do something. <laughs> Ooh. Hi, afternoon, boys. I was hoping that I might have a word with the Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, don't tell me that you have some reason to dislike me, too. You should be grateful I brought a visitor with me to see you. A visitor? Oh, no! <laughs> Why did you come here? Why? Why do you think? You have to <laughs> she doesn't your know. Automail for the North, don't you? And just what are you doing in that cell? We didn't ask you to come here! What's with you? Oh my I god. What about you, idiot? Someone from the military contacted me, so the I military. came. Military? It's so sinister having Kimberly be her guardian right now. That is creepy as hell. Don't be so hard on her, you two. The Fuhrer was concerned about Don't you. touch her. <laughs> Make sure you were taken care of. <laughs> and Winry has no idea what's going on. When we run, Kimberly is so terrifying, and it just makes it so much more intense with him touching Winry, like having her in his care. It just amplifies the the horror because she's so good, and she has no idea what's going on right now. End credit scene. Kimberly. Yes, I heard about it from a friend of mine who's working as a nurse at the base of the mountain. She said he was admitted with serious injuries, but after General Raven came to visit, he recovered right away. The gold tooth doctor. It was really nice seeing you. Nice. That's not much to go on. A bouquet of flowers might help you next time. Yeah, I'm better off without her. But thanks anyway. When one woman leaves you, another may find you. Interesting I fortune. Have a for you from Olivier Mira Armstrong. Oh wow. Colonel Roy Mustang, right? Hmm. I'll take every flower you have in that cart. <laughs> so many codes. 
Nothing is normal. I wonder what their backstory is, because she said she didn't care about Roy at all. I guess she sees him as competition, right? Which means she respects him. And in times like this, when you're basically being invaded by superiors from Eastern City, now would be a good time to get in contact with Roy. You have to think that Armstrong is thinking a little bit ahead here, because killing Raven is a huge deal. Like, I don't think she would do that without having some kind of foresight. We've seen inner monologues with her where she's strategizing, so she probably has a plan that involves Roy, which is cool. I've been sort of like missing Roy a little bit. He hasn't been that involved in these episodes recently. But yeah, that was a huge episode. First of all, the intro with Hohenheim was incredible. Lots of feelings there. I have a totally new perspective on Hohenheim. But then that huge move by Armstrong killing Raven, definitely living up to her reputation. Raven seemed really weak and it seems like his weakness came from arrogance or overconfidence in who he was and his rank. We'll never know for sure now that he's dead, but my feeling is that he was a lot less important than he thought he was. And he's a loose end. Like thinking about it from Bradley's perspective, him spilling his guts like that is not the kind of person you want in your upper ranks. Like he got so played by that, that simple plan. And now he's pushed Armstrong and her Northern forces completely on Ed's side and Al's side and Roy's side by extension. So that was a huge mistake. The only problem with this whole thing is that Kimberly is sort of around and Kimberly is not stupid. There's a good chance that he sniffs this whole thing out. And even if he doesn't, he poses a real threat to basically everybody who's in the North. Not least of all Winry, who he is chaperoning, the creepiest chaperone of all time. Although it is sort of nice to see Winry again and have her around. She's been in Rush Valley for a little bit too long, I think. But yeah, so that's the end of episode 36. I'll see you guys next time for episode 37, where I hope things continue to ramp up like this, because this is super exciting.